Hello, Daniel. Just coming up to 10 to 7 on breakfast. Immigration is a hot topic right now because as President Donald Trump cracks down on people coming into the United States, a report has been released on the effects of immigrants coming here. It's been published by the New Zealand Initiative and its executive director, Dr. Oliver Hartwich, is with us now. Good morning, Dr. Hartwich. Let's just start with some, some basic numbers. How many people, how many migrants actually come to New Zealand? Well, last year we had 69,000 net arrivals. That means people actually coming more to New Zealand than actually departing the country as well. But we know, of course, that not all of them are going to stay in the long term. Some of them they are counted as permanent and long-term arrivals, but that only means that they're intending to stay in the country for 12 months. Not all of them, of course, stay in the longer term. OK. How well do migrants who are intending to stay here for a long period integrate into New Zealand society? They're integrating extremely well, based on a number of measures, really. Um, when you look at migrants, you see that they are not more criminal than people born in New Zealand. Actually, they're less criminal. They are less often on benefits. They are less often unemployed. And they're contributing greatly to public finances. So on average, they're paying into the public coffers about $2,600 more than they actually get out in public services. So they're integrating quite well. And actually, if you ask them what they feel about New Zealand, 87% of our migrants are telling you that they feel they belong to New Zealand. And it's a win-win situation, because if you're asking New Zealanders what they think of migrants, about four in five New Zealanders believe that migrants contribute positively to our culture and society. And about uh, seven in 10 believe that they also make a positive contribution to the economy. So we're really talking about a very positive picture here. It is a win-win story for both migrants and New Zealanders alike. See, this is the thing that I think is probably typical for most migrants. Moving anywhere, people don't go halfway across the world because they want a worse life. They move because they want to improve their situation. That's exactly right. And if you're looking at the migrants that New Zealand receives, these are people are driven people, the people who really want to make an impact on the country that they move to, but also that they want to improve their own situation, of course. And yeah. you can also see it reflected in, for example, the education result of migrants' children. They are doing extremely well. You see a lot of upward mobility for education results, and that kind of demonstrates the kind of group we are getting in uh, our migrants. We're getting driven people. We get people who really want to make an impact and who want to move on in life. There are some significant impacts, though, and I want to talk about the housing market, first of all. How does migration impact the housing market in New Zealand, and particularly in Auckland? Because migrants have been blamed for driving up house prices. Probably less than people really think, because a lot of the migrants that we are receiving are not coming in to buy houses. They're actually renting, because a lot of the migrants do not intend to stay forever. But even um, if you're looking at migration at the current levels, well, um, think back three, four years. We had a relatively balanced migration experience, and we still had rocketing house prices. So actually, there's something wrong with the housing market. And we think we need to fix the housing market for the benefit of both migrants and New Zealanders alike. And we shouldn't be scapegoating migrants for the problems that we have created ourselves. OK. We have net migration then of just over, over 60,000. Do we have the infrastructure to handle that? Uh, probably not quite. We need more infrastructure, of course. Um, but as I said, migrants are already contributing positively to public finance, and therefore we should have the means to make that work. If you're concerned about that, what our report suggests is that we might consider putting on a levy on migrants to actually help pay for some of the extra infrastructure required. How would that work? Well, it could be uh, basically a tax on people when they receive um, their visa, that we ask them to contribute, to make an extra contribution on top of what they're already contributing to the economy to pay for the infrastructure that they require to also alleviate some New Zealanders' fears on that. But we think this can be handled because basically that's the story of New Zealand. The traditional story of New Zealand has been a story of migration. It is a country that has benefited massively from migration. And when all of this started, there was no infrastructure there. So I think we're just continuing what we have done already. So what do you say to New Zealanders who look at net migration in New Zealand and say, I'm not racist, I just think we have to stem the flow of migration because we don't have the infrastructure to handle it, we don't have the houses to house them? I would like these uh, people to reconsider the position and just look at the facts that we have laid out in the report. I think we are benefiting from migration, there's no doubt about it. And I think if I summed up our report very simply, I would say we've long known that New Zealand is probably one of the best countries in the world, but we also now see that we probably receive the best migrants in the world. This is really something that benefits both New Zealanders and migrants alike. All right, Dr. Oliver Hartwich, thank you very much for your time this morning.